Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. My name is Diana Hunstad. And I call this worship because this is where the church gathers today to worship a God who is the author and giver of life, Steve's life, and who is the promise of Steve's life going forward. I'd like to begin with Psalm 91. Those who focus their faith on God, who find their security in him, do not have to live in fear. They are not left untouched by the tempests of this life, and they may be wounded by the onslaughts of evil, but their great God does not leave them to suffer these things alone. The Lord cares for his own and delivers them even in the midst of the conflicts that plague them. If God is truly our God, we do not have to be afraid of the enemy that threatens or the affliction that lays us low. Even the ministering spirits of God's invisible world watch over you. Our loving God has promised, because my children love me, I will never let them go. I shall feel the pain of their wounds and bear their hurt and shall transform that which is ugly into that which enriches and blesses. And when they cry out in agony, I shall hear and answer them. I will be close to them and will deliver them. And I will grant them eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today and celebrate the life of our brother, Steve. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, in the order of our service, we are going to hear reflection, one at least. We'll begin with Lucy. Welcome. Welcome. My dear, <laughs> my dear Steve, God looked around his garden. He found an empty place. Then he looked down upon this earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and closed your weary eyes and he whispered, peace be thine, come and rest. Then ever so gently and ever so kind, he lifted you up to heaven the day he called you home. God's garden must be beautiful. God and your family knew you were suffering and all we knew you were in pain. We continue to give our love and supporting prayers. On June 16th, 1984 was our wedding day, the beginning of our journey and yes, you did enrich my life, and I have been very blessed. 
Our vows are not just words spoken, but a meaningful connection. I held on to them, always hopeful. I wanted my Steve back. Steve, we now have completed our wedding vows until death do us part, which ended in June of 2020. But our journey was filled with love. We have two wonderful children, Brian and Katie. I will miss your love and warm embrace and your comfort, your smile, and yes, your sarcastic remarks. But that was my Steve. I definitely was your better half. I know you would. I know you would agree because you told me several times. So as Brian and Katie and Christine have stated, Dad made those in his life feel loved, in which Dad displayed that love to Brian, Christine, Katie, and his grandchildren, Bennett and Cameron. Time and time again, I know Steve loved me because he told me. Brian and Katie, his gifts to you, love. He believed in both of you. He wanted you to follow your dreams, <coughs> wishing you both much fulfillment in life. He wanted both of you to be happy. Truly, I can hear Dad saying this. If there ever comes a day when we can't be together, keep me in your heart. I'll stay there forever. Remember, you are loved. Steve, God has you in heaven holding you in the palm of his hand. Mom and dad have you wrapped inside of their loving arms. Steve, I have you in my heart until we meet again. As I was writing this, Steve, Sophie was on the grass having an issue. She was all tangled up. And I looked down and I found a white gray feather in the grass. Thank you, Steve. I know your burden is lifted and peace is flowing within you and me and our family. So I think there's not many tears left. Uh, it's gonna be tough for me. I'm gonna power through it though. If you knew my dad, you knew he wasn't overly emotional or verbally expressive in his affection, unless the Vikings were on. <laughs> However, not a day went by that passed that I questioned his love for our family. He leaned on something much more powerful than words. It was his actions. And it's in those actions that I want to highlight today to truly describe the man I'll always remember in my heart. First, I'll remember my dad as a host and a chef. He always made sure to take time and celebrate life's special moments. He was at his happiest when opening up his home to his family and his friends, preparing a special meal for everyone. Seeing the satisfaction on his guest's face made all the effort worthwhile. And he always made sure there's plenty of food to go around and for people to take home. I'll always remember my dad as a provider. He spent his entire life in the tax field, getting his master's and CPA along the way, something I looked up to. Well, it wasn't always easy for him to find long-term job stability, whether it be to company performance or just not the right fit. His confidence in himself and ability to continue to support our family never wavered. No matter how bad the day was, he never brought home work with him. As soon as he walked into the door, he transformed from Steve the accountant into dad. He was an early bird, out the door before any of us were up so that he could consistently be home to enjoy evening activities and dinner with the family. He worked as hard as he did, not for himself. He rarely spent money on personal possessions or expensive vacations, but instead to fulfill his family's wants and needs. 
including spoiling Katie and I with the latest gifts, whether it be my latest video games or Ninja Turtles or a bike or clothes or private schooling or college tuitions to support our, our finances so we can graduate debt free. Regular family dinner outings, whether it's taking me to chance, chance for the hundredth time to get my buffalo chicken sandwich or cars and the frequent breakdowns that we had, furniture, house improvements, and all mom's things. I'll always remember dad being present, wearing so many hats, whether it be my coach or cheerleader during sporting events, my pack leader and pie worn derby consultant as I worked my way through scouts, my trick or treat companion, as we braved the 91 Halloween blizzard. My teacher and mentor, as we worked through late night, math word problems at the kitchen table, or perfected the art of fishing, or getting behind the wheel for the first time. He was my doctor when I fell off my bike, and got badly, or got badly sunburned out at the lake. He was our movie critic, after spending weekend nights watching the latest releases from Blockbuster video update, and then forgetting to rewind them or bring them back. He was our trivia and word puzzle king of the Sunday paper. He was our handyman fixing up the damage I did to the house wrestling or trying on the walls. <coughs> he was our chauffeur as he drove me to and from my first job at Subway in Lakeville nearly 20 minutes away, oftentimes past clothes in his bedtime. And once I got a car, shortly after training 16, he was the mechanic, helping to give me a jump when I forgot to turn off the lights or trouble, troubleshoot various issues. And my psych psychiatrist providing a calming presence as I battled anxiety throughout my life's stressful moments. And finally, as a guiding light, as I walked down the aisle, raised my children and managed my own career. The list could go on. Dad, you've been instrumental in my life with your heart leading the way. These experiences have made me into the man I am today. And I hope to share these same life lessons with my kids. And for that, I'm forever grateful. As difficult as it is knowing you're gone, I know that you're at peace in your eternal life in heaven with your mom and dad. You'll forever be missed, but always in our hearts. And to, to conclude, I wanna quote my dad's favorite Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall softly upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of your hand. In your hand. Love you, Dad. I'm going to invite those of you who are able to stand to please stand as we share the gospel that the family has selected. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He knows he's going to die and he wants to comfort them because they just don't get it. But he knows that they're going to be feeling just what you're feeling and experiencing. So he says to them, he says to you, he says to us, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am there, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. The gospel of our Lord. Please, Please be seated. Lucy and Brian and Katie and Christine, Bob, extended family and friends who knew and loved Steve. As I've come to understand, he was a pretty easy person to love. Thank you for being here today, hidden under masks. out of respect for everyone around you. Disease. That's why we're sitting like this. The pandemic, a nasty little germ that is disrupting everyone's lives. We live in a broken world. And in this broken world, broken things happen. The body breaks down. Sometimes the mental health breaks down. Trees die. I mean, the world starts looking like it's broken down. But Steve's situation and Steve's life demonstrates for us that hope doesn't die. If everything around us falls and goes, our hope still doesn't die. I heard someone say once, where there's life, there's hope. And I've always believed that. If someone's in a crisis, myself in a crisis. I remind myself, Diana, where there's life, there's hope. Where there's life, there's hope. And I know how you hoped. You shared with me how you hoped and how you prayed for healing. For healing, for husband, for father, for a soon-to-be grandpa for brother. A story I did hear that I have permission to share with in this hope was arguing and convincing and pleading. And even the words Katie spoke, Dad, I need you here to walk me down the aisle when I get married. You would think that would have some power that we hope it does to bring healing. And then I remember you coming home to your mother and her words. I mean, I don't remember it. I wasn't there. You saying, ah, he didn't listen to me. I want you to know he did listen to you. He did hear you. And part of his, in this canny disease, is that then they feel guilty because they can't do what you want them to do. So then they feel worse and then things just perpetuate. And the body finally gets to where the body says, whoo, this is too much for me. But it was not because Steve didn't listen. It was not because his heart wasn't in the right place. Had nothing to do with that.
I want to challenge the thought today since we want to focus on our celebration and our theme of hope and peace. So I do want to challenge the statement or belief that hope is limited only up to the point of death. Well, there went our hope. We were hoping he'd come through this. We were hoping they could cut out a cancer. We were hoping they could just fix the arm or the leg. We were hoping. And it's exactly what Jesus' disciples said when the world beat him up. We were hoping. He was our hope. Oh, we hoped. And their hope fell apart. And they gathered like you are here in a room, in shock and confused and what happened? And so they did what I hope you and your faith will do too. When they asked the questions, remember when he said he would tear down temple and build it again in three days yet? Did he do it? Mm -hmm. Remember when he said he was going to raise Lazarus up? Yeah. But did he do it? Yeah. Yeah, he did. You were with him when he laid his hands on that blind man that we knew from birth who was blind. And all of a sudden, Jesus lays his hands on that man's eyes, and he can see for the first time in his life. We were there. I was there. He said he was going to do these things. Did he do them? Yes. So in the gospel for today that you picked, Jesus promises in that comfort for his disciples. First of all, if it weren't true, would I tell you? No. Because he always told them the truth. Whether they liked to hear all of it or not was another story. But he always told them the truth. So now he says, I'm going to a place. Steve went to a place. He didn't go alone. I know when you received the word that he had died, your first thought, you said, was, oh, no. He was all alone. But he wasn't. The last chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I'm with you always. When no one else could be there because no one else knew, Jesus kept his promise and he showed up. And when Steve's heart, his diabetes, he saw these complications that he had and struggled with all his life in his body said, oh. Jesus said, come home. Yep, come home and peace will be thine. I believe Jesus came. I believe he kept his promise. And I believe he took Steve to be with him where he is. Where is that? Because you're a pastor. Where is that? What does that look like? What's good? Well, I've never been there, so I don't know. But I do believe with every fiber of my being that this Jesus of Nazareth, by some miracle of God, was raised from the dead and is in this spiritual, mystical place called heaven. And if Jesus is there, that's where I want to be. And that's where I want all the people I love to be. Because when you're in the presence of this Jesus, whether it's here on earth, as you're always in his presence, or face to face, as he says, we will finally be no masks. 
face to face. What a day that will be. When he says, I'll come for every one of you. Not because you're so darn good. But because I just love you too much to let you go. So for a little while, you have to let go of Steve. You can still talk to him. He's in the presence of the Almighty God after all. And when you go to pray to God and you don't know what words to say, remember scripture says the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. Knows every, every, every moan, every groan, every tear, God knows. So give it to God. Anger, doubt. Give it to God. And then remember Jesus' words. I am. I will. Not I might. I will. My prayer for you is that in the days and weeks and months ahead that are going to be hard. They will be hard. I'm going to lie to you. But ask. Simple word, help me Jesus. And let God lift you and carry you. Because that's the peace that I pray comes to each of you in the midst of the storm. This is a storm. Peace will come because it comes in the name above all names. Jesus, the Christ. Let us pray. God of all grace and mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all our sorrow on you, we may know the consolation of your love. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that we may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those we love. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection to life everlasting. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Steve to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for all your people. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Gracious God, give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that we may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those we love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to trust in you, in your mercy, in your grace, that together we may come and reunite in your glory. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Steve. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Go in peace. This concludes our service here for Steve. Uh, we're going to be going out to Spring Lake Cemetery in police procession. You're all invited. Uh, and then in just a moment, we'll be leaving here, leaving the room. And we will release the rose uh, by one of our funeral directors. I'm going to ask you to all please stand. 